Hey there, Mercedes here from prettywebs.com and today I'm going to show you how to make animated snow inside of Photoshop. For this one, we're going to be focusing on the position key on the video timeline. So we're going to start off with creating the snow. So we'll make a quick brush and then from there we'll get into the timeline itself. So let's go ahead and get started. I'm going to come up here to File, New and we're going to start with that brush. So I'm going to do 500 pixels wide by 500 pixels height. Resolution 72 and I am working in RGB 8-bit. Go ahead and click create. You zoom into this a little bit. I'm going to come here to the ellipse tool. So if you uh, hold down the shape tool right here and it's going to be the third one down the ellipse tool. Make sure that your fill color is black and that you have no stroke selected there. And then just go ahead and click here and we're going to make the first one 200 pixels by 200 pixels. Letter V on the keyboard so that we can drag this out. And I'm going to leave this right around there. I'm going to hold the Option key or Alt key on the keyboard. You'll see the two double arrows. That means you can drag out a second one. And we'll bring this down to the bottom, maybe make it a little bit bigger. So about 250 or so. It doesn't have to be exact. Make sure that the background is white and your brush is black. So we're going to come here to edit and we're going to go define brush preset. You can name it whatever you want. I'm going to go ahead and click cancel because I've already saved it. Now I'm going to open up a new document. So file new and I'm going to go with 1920 by 1080. I'll keep the resolution at 72. Now if you're making this animation for like an Instagram story then you would just swap these out so the height would be 1920 and your width would be 1080. So just be the reverse for uh, something like that. But basically here you'd be using the correct size for the social media platform that you're using and I'm going to click create. Uh, I am going to change the background to black. I do have my foreground and background colors at set at default right now. I want to fill this with my background color so I'm going to press command and delete to fill that background. And then I'm just going to unlock my background layer. I'm going to add a new blank layer on top of this. This is going to be snow background and then I'll add another one and this one is going to be snow foreground. Okay, we're going to take the brush that we just created. So I'm going to come into my brushes. I'm going to choose this one. This is the brush that I just made, but I want to show you the settings for this brush. So before I made it, let me go back to this. This is the, the brush um, with the settings. It's going to be this one. Let me quickly show you the settings for this. I've reduced the size to 60 pixels. The spacing is 129%. This, uh, if you come to shape dynamics, the size jitter 100%, minimum diameter 30, angle jitter 60, roundness jitter 40 or 41, minimum roundness 25%. I have flip X and flip Y jitters selected. If you come here to scattering, I have scatter set to both axis 1000%. Our count is one, our count jitter is 26%. Transfer, I have my opacity at 69%, flow at 40%. I have wet edges selected and I have smoothing selected. Now once you have all of those settings, you can just come here and choose a new brush preset. And that's going to save the changes to the original brush that you made here. Now if you don't want to go through all the trouble of making the brush, I am going to include a download link to the brush that I made so you can just download that and use that if you like. So we're going to go ahead and start with the background snow and I'm just going to paint on some snow here. So this is our background snow. It's going to be smaller than the foreground. Now we're going to come up here to the uh, foreground snow and I'm going to bring the size up to 100 pixels. You can see that right here. I'm just using the right bracket to do that on my keyboard and then I'm just going to add some larger snow over the top. What we're going to do is blur this snow out again. So we're going to come here to snow background. From here I'm going to come to filter. We're going to use motion blur for this. 
So I'm gonna leave mine at about 45 degrees and my distance, I'm gonna leave at 15. I'll go ahead and click OK. Now for the snow foreground, that top layer there, we're gonna do the same thing. We're gonna come here to Filter, Blur, we're just going to go ahead and leave that at 90 degrees and the distance for this one will leave at about 5 pixels. So I'm going to go ahead and click OK. I do need the snow to actually be longer than the canvas so that it can fall. I have my snow foreground selected. So what I'm going to do is select the two snow layers. I'm going to hold the Option key, letter V on the keyboard, and then I'm going to hold the Option key to make a duplicate of these two layers. Now I'm gonna merge snow background and snow background copy, command and the letter E, and I'm gonna merge these two right here. So snow foreground, snow foreground copy, those will be merged as well, command and the letter E. So now I just basically made them longer so that they can be moved around like this. I'm going to turn the background off. Um, I, I do have these areas right here where it got cut off. So what I'm going to do is come here to the erase tool and just remove these. And this doesn't have to be perfect. Snow is not perfect. So, but we're, we do want to get rid of those very straight edges there. I'll just kind of remove those. And let me turn this one off, turn on the snow background and do the same thing here. So let's see what this looks like. So just remove this, just where you see some very sharp edges. Okay, I'm gonna bring them both back up here to the edge. Okay, now we're gonna go ahead and open up the timeline to do the animation. So I'm gonna come here to Window, Timeline, and we're gonna use Create Video Timeline for this one. I'm going to come here to the little gear icon, make sure that resolution is at 50% and that loop playback is selected. And we're going to start with our foreground snow. So you'll go ahead and click on that little arrow right there to bring up our options here. So the three options that we have for this are position, opacity, and style. We are going to be working with position for this one. So I'm going to make sure to click on that little time clock there. And that's going to add our first key here. I'm going to make this smaller so that I can see it. Now I'm going to take my playhead all the way to the end and I'm going to add another key for this frame, snow foreground. So I have snow foreground selected here and all I'm going to do is drag this layer down about halfway. Now I'm going to uh, take the playhead back to the beginning. Okay, now we're going to go ahead and select the snow background layer. Uh, the same thing as before, we're going to click on that little drop down arrow to show all of our options here. We're going to be working with position again, so we're going to go ahead and click on that position key right there. So you can see where it's it's uh, been added to the timeline there. Now we're going to take the playhead and scrub all the way to the end of this video. And we're going to click on that keyframe one more time to add another a key to the end of this. So what we're going to do, so our beginning key was aligned with the bottom edge here. Now we're just going to drag this so at the end it's going to be aligned with the top. So our first one here we went down halfway and with this one we're going, we, we've taken it all the way down and the reason for that is because I want the foreground snow, this one, to look like it's falling slower than the background is. Let's go ahead and play that and see what that looks like. So you can see that they're falling at different speeds there. To use this with an image, you would actually just delete this black background that we were using just to, you know, kind of see what we were doing here with a regular image. So you just, you know, put your image here, go to File, place embedded, place the image here. And once you have everything the way you like it, you'd come up here to file, export, save for web legacy. Now I'm gonna do mine without this layer. So I'm gonna just go ahead and delete that. That way I could add this animated snow GIF layer to any image, uh, even outside of this. So I can come here to file, export, and then save for web legacy. Now this is going to take some time, uh, just you know, be patient with this if you have an older computer.
From here, when you get to this screen, you'll just come up here to GIF. And we don't really need a lot as far as color goes. It's just one color. So we're going to go with GIF Restricted or GIF Restricted. And I'm going to actually bring the size down. My size here is pretty big. It's at 6.64. So I'm going to bring this down to 1280 by 720. Now anytime you change the size or do any of that, it, it is going to make your computer work a little bit because it's changing the size here. But you really do need to work with, you know, how big this is going to be, your animation is going to be, especially if you're working with this for a website, uh, you want it to be as small as possible. So we got it down to about 5.28. You might even, you know, work with this and try to get that down even more or use an online service that'll kind of crunch the the gif to make it smaller so i'm just going to go ahead and save it as it is here so i'm going to go ahead and click save i hope you found this video helpful if you did please make sure to like share subscribe leave me a comment any or all of those things would be greatly appreciated and also don't forget to go over to prettywebs.com for more design resources and tutorials until next time thanks for watching